Hi guys and welcome to the little wood shop again. So for this week we're gonna build this little, shall we call it the coffee table, it goes over an ottoman. The ottoman's height is 430 mm high and 700 millimeters wide and then it's something like 2 meters so it just goes over the one end of an ottoman. This job is for an interior designer that's doing a job in woodlands here in Bloemfontein and uh, we're doing it from white oak. The white oak is now extremely expensive. It's now, I think, 44,550 rand a cube, which is a lot of wood, but that really, the price is horrible. It's a simple project, but it needs to be extremely strong. So we're gonna do domino joints. I don't have a domino. My friend Rob has got a domino and he offered to help me with this. And uh, so let me show you how we've built this. Hi guys, so for this week we have to make a little table type of thing that goes over the ottoman. It's basically going to have a side, a side and a top and it just goes over ottoman to create like a coffee table type of thing. It's a job I'm doing for an interior designer that's here in the city with us and uh, I'm doing it from white oak. So I've cut the parts, planed it down size and now all I'm doing is edging my joints for a nice tight glue joint and since I my surface planer doesn't work I must still one day fix that but uh, I do this by hand plan so I'm gonna show you how I do it and then if you know of a better way or of an easier way tell me but this works for me let me show you so I'm going to demonstrate to you one of the sides I'm doing and I think we all know about the grain orientation, the end grain that we must stagger or change and what I've done here for those who don't know, the grain in this side runs cup, the one in the center a bulge or bowl and the cup on this side again. So that is to prevent the wood from cupping then I also the width is going to end up on 450 I've got way much more than 450 so what I've decided to do is I'm going to get rid of this light wood here I'm going to cut that off quickly so that we have dark wood and then I'll trim the two edges off as well to get rid of the white and the white the lighter wood the sack wood to try and keep the shade all the same we're going to stain this it's going to be smoky oak going to do it to the Rubio Monocoat so it might not be a big problem but I would like to get rid of the sap wood so quickly first I'm going to cut that one off and then I'll show you from there that now looks much better I'm still about 60 millimeters over so I can cut a 30 mil on this side and a 30 mil on that side off and that will get rid of the lighter wood on the edges. So my end grains are correct and I just marked with the triangle so that I know what I marked as the tops and the end grain orientation. So now I'm going to put them in the vise and quickly plane them to close up all the little gaps. There's not much, I just cut them on the table saw and it actually looks very good. But just to be 100% sure, I'm going to do them with a hand plane and I'm quickly going to show you. So what I do is I take two of them next to each other, line up the edges and then plane them. The reason when you just use one, it's very easy for the plane to chamfer or to cam camber and when you have two in a wider area it's so much easier to keep a 90 degree angle let me show you so what I've done is I clamped it in the bench vise as close to square as I can right through from the start to the end and then I just plane the two together and here you can see now you've got so much 
you really have to do something wrong to get this fired. I take very light passes in the beginning. It's really a very, very fine pass. That's a bit heavy. Here we go. Very light passes, very thin pieces I take off from the edges. What I'm looking for is to get rid of the saw marks in the first place and then also any burn marks if there might be. Because like we all know, the burn marks glue doesn't stick to that. Love these shavings. I don't know if you can see that. That is a mighty nice joint. So, guys, like we all know. Oak has got the tendency to react with metal whenever moisture is involved. In this case, glue will be the moisture. So what I do to prevent most of that is I just add a piece of masking tape to my clamp before I start gluing. Then I pack my wood. I'm just going to glue straight joints without biscuits and then remembering the triangle that I marked earlier to make sure the orientation of my grain is correct. So let me put some glue and clamp it for you. Once again the glue I use is the Alkaline Ultra which is very very strong and auto also water resistant making sure I cover absolutely every part of the board And I don't have to tighten up too much because we really made sure that the joint is perfect. So we don't have to squeeze it into submission, we just have to make sure we get loose squeeze out everywhere. Make sure everything is lined up nicely.
just quickly go and wait, get a wet rag and wipe off the excess glue. So there we are guys, I hope you can see that. Just put a straight edge on there to show you. You don't have to over clamp it to get absolute no gaps because we made, put a little bit extra effort into the joints. This is the one joint here and there's another joint this side. I hope you can see that nicely with this horrible camera of mine. But there's absolutely no gaps. I just put some small clamps with the rubber feet to make sure I line up the four joints nice and properly. Another two of them and then this can lie for the night. So that's the three panels then glued. I made sure that nowhere there's metal touching the wood wherever there's glue to prevent the black marks that the tannin in the oak causes when it reacts to the metal. All three of them done. I'm gonna leave them for the night. They're all oversized, so once this is dry tomorrow, I can chop them down and get them to size. And then the way I'm gonna join them is with dominoes, the Festool domino machine. I don't have one myself, but I have a friend that said I can borrow his. Or he will help me to do it. We will get to do that. That heap of wood lying on that side, that's another friend of mine, Leon, that we did the little basin for. He's busy making some gifts for ladies. I'm not sure totally what it is, but he actually got a burning iron that he uses and he burns the logos on. The logos look something like that. And we saw me use the draw press and a little jig to make sure all the logos are burnt in the right place on the little angles. The workshop looks quite in a state, but that's because two guys is busy with two different projects in the workshop. So we'll see you tomorrow. So I've got them out of the clamps and the glue lines is on top. I've cut all of the parts 450 millimeters wide because that's my fixed dimension that I know they have to be. And because the Ottoman is uh, 430 mil high and 700 mil wide, I made this 435 millimeters and 710 millimeters inside diameter that this is going to be. So I must now cut them to length, all of this. So the two short legs on the sides will be 435 millimeters and that will give me a 5 millimeter gap on top of the ottoman. I still need to find out what type of ottoman it is, maybe the pillow or the cushion on top is a bit round, but what I plan to do anyway is put little rubber buttons on the bottom where it's going to stand on the floor, so that will give it another 3 maybe 4 millimeters. The top of the little table whatever we call this I made 710 millimeters which will give me a 5 millimeter gap on each side so there should be enough space they usually quite straight so I just lightly sanded them just to get the worst of the glue marks away and see how my glue lines came up came out and I'm very happy with my glue lines so I'm gonna trim one side now up 100% square because if the two legs is just a minute amount out of square, this tabletop will twist or wobble on the floor, it will not stand solid on the floor. So I must, must make 110% sure I get the cut that I do now first very square. Then I'm going to measure from that cut to the second cut just to double check and make sure I get that square as well. So this is now the do or die moment, the final cuts and then hopefully on Friday or Saturday we're going to go to Rob, a friend of mine that's got a Festool Domino, then we're going to domino these together and uh, 
I still have to ask him if he's alright if I take the camera with and show you that part how we do that I'm quite excited about it, it will be the first time that I work with a Domino but um, let me get this cut and see how accurate we can get this to 90 degrees so I've made my marks where I want to cut off the lengths and I just double check with my fence and my square to make sure when I'm on my marks that I'm still 100% square and then just as an extra precaution I then when I cut that side I will use this side again as my square reference when I put the fence on that side just in case this is a little bit out by checking square this side and then later square that side you might have some trouble so I just make sure I keep my square on the same side and that will cause these two to be 100% parallel I hope let me cut these and I'll show you what they look like so guys that's now they've cut two of them cut and uh, I just want to show you these edges are so so nice I don't know if you can see that I mean that's really that's a glue line that is as close as perfect thing as you can get I really I like a glue line like that where there's no spaces and the chances of this breaking is not very good guys then just to show you this is one of the glued end pieces that I've cut off and just to show you the strength of this glue it's actually quite I'm gonna try and heat it on the corner to see if I can break it and as you can see it doesn't break on the joint this side or this side there we broke it but the actual wood stayed behind it's a really if you use a proper glue and your joints is as closed as that it's really really a very good joint I love it so guys I went to my friend Rob and he helped me to cut the dominoes and he gave me some hardwood dominoes to put in there so we're gonna fit them and then glue this but before I can do the final glue up I just want to sand these to at least very close to a final finish that's gonna be a hundred and eighty grit that I'm gonna sand them to because I'm gonna use Rubio Monocoat so I'm quickly gonna do the final sanding inside and outside of this before I start gluing so the one thing all of us woodworkers love is sanding and uh, that's sarcastic uh, quickly gonna sand I'll be back to you in an hour or so So there we are guys, I've just put it through the drum sander quickly. I've got the small little J1632 drum sander, which is an amazing little machine. And that it just helps a lot. I don't know if you ever felt over a piece of furniture when you rub over it, you feel that little bit of unevenness. And that's usually what an orbital sander will give you if you start off and finish with it. So my rule of thumb is usually get it flat with a drum sander. And there's an 80 grit sandpaper in there so I'm at 80 grit now now I'm going to take 100 grit sandpaper on my small orbital and really concentrate on not standing still or going slow in certain spaces 
I don't have to because there's no glue joints left, no glue marks, no pencil marks, nothing on all of them. So I can really concentrate now on getting even speed, even pressure right around and get them to a nice 150 or 180 and then I can glue them. So that's it guys, it's been sanded now to 180 grit. I just lined them up to make sure my domino holes all line up on both sides because I now sanded out my pencil marks or my reference marks and uh, it looks like they line up nicely the way they are now. I wish there was such a thing as fuel cam so that you can feel this. There's really not a little bit of a dent or anything in it and I love the finish. So now I'm going to quickly glue the dominoes and get this, these two legs 90 degrees to the top and then you're going to leave them in the clamps until tomorrow. As you can see I've glued the one and I must tell you, I don't know how but somewhere I must get myself a domino. This is an amazing system and it works a charm. I really, I absolutely love it. So guys, this thing came out amazing. The dominoes, it's really, it's something I'll have to invest in some other time. It's just ridiculously expensive at the moment. But that is really something I would love to invest in. This thing is so sturdy and steady that I promise you, I don't even think if you carve it out of a solid piece of wood, you'll get it any stronger than this. I mean, I can really try and break it. I'm amazed about the strength that's in a domino. I really love it. And uh, so now it's just finishing. That will do next week. I'm going to just flush trim this with a flush trim router bit on both sides. Then we're going to break the corners just a very, very, very little bit. Just so it's not too sharp corners. And then we'll start staining with the Rubio Monocoat. Or not staining, varnishing. It's all sanded to 180. We will definitely sand again because wherever I wipe the glue off when I did the glue up, the water actually made the grain rise a bit. So we will definitely sand again back to 180. But I'm very happy with the joint. I can't believe how strong it is. It's amazing. So guys, just a quick thank you very much for watching the video watching to the end of the video um, I don't know if you noticed my subscribers are climbing quite nicely thank you very much guys but there's still according to my analytics on my YouTube studio it shows that only something like 4% of the people that watch the videos actually subscribe 93 or 94% of the people watching the videos don't subscribe so consider please smash that button, subscribe, like, share, comment. Let's make this channel great. Thank you guys. Enjoy the week.